And now to the murder trial of the three men charged in the killing of Ahmad Arbery. One of the defendants reenacted his pursuit of the 25-year-old jogger with a GBI special agent two months after Arbery was shot to death. We saw the video during the trial today. News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker joins us live from the Glynn County Courthouse in Maryland. The agent told the court that William Bryan's statements didn't add up. Yes, Special Agent Jason Seacrest says what Brian told Glenn County Police was a more direct statement, but says what Brian told him was a minimized version of his role in, in Amard Arbery's death that day. The attorney defending Brian, which is Kevin Goff, says during the interviews, Brian was scared and that he could not remember specifics, but Goff says that the agent at the time could have reminded Brian of what he told the police. This body camera shows Officer Robert Rash with his gun drawn inside Larry English's home under construction Stop on it. February 11th. The county police, everybody in here? It's now the third time English reached out to Rash to go to his house to find the person seen multiple times in his surveillance video. Officer Rash told the court Friday he learned Travis McMichael was in front of the home that night with a gun and went to see if the person on video possibly ran behind his home. And and Greg McMichael and Travis McMichael are out there as well. Uh, yes, they are. You're okay with that? Yes. You even find out Travis is armed, right? Uh, yes. You're okay with that? Yes. You didn't tell Travis to go put his gun up? Nope. They didn't find anyone that night and didn't see anything stolen. Officer Rash says he asked 10 to 20 people in Satilla Shores if they've ever seen the man on video in the neighborhood before. They all said no. The state called GBI Special Agent Jason Seacrest to the stand. He interviewed William Bryan twice in May of 2020 before he was arrested. Seacrest says the day Arbery was killed, Bryan saw someone running and heard a car engine. After grabbing his keys, Bryan got in his truck and told Seacrest he didn't know what he was doing. Mr. Bryan stated, I figured if I'd slowed him down and got a picture, that maybe something would happen in the end other than just him getting away and cops not knowing who he was. I say, I said, so, so then that kind of makes me want to ask, why did the cops need to know? Mr. Bryan replied, because I figured he had done something wrong. What made you think he had done, he might have done something wrong? Mr. Bryan responded, it was just instinct, man. I don't know. Seacrest says in his interview with Brian, he says Brian never told Arbery to stop running and that he didn't remember Brian saying he tried to angle or block Arbery in the interviews or during a ride along where they reenacted his pursuit of Arbery. Now, Goff says during the court's viewing of the reenactment, Special Agent Seacrest paraphrased what he thought Brian was saying about these moments. But Seacrest came back and said that he said and did what Brian directed him to do with his memory of what he did the day of the shooting. And after court let out, we heard from Ahmaud Arbery's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, or her attorney, and they said they've been pleased so far with what Special Agent Seacrest got up on the stand and said today. And back outside the courthouse, the Transformative Justice Coalition let us know that they plan to have a lot more pastors present starting next week, specifically Reverend Jesse Jackson. That's supposed to happen starting next week. And the defense also told us that they plan to start calling their witnesses next week. Hopefully about 30 of them will come to the stand. We're live in Glenn County tonight. Marilyn Parker, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Marilyn. And you can follow every development in the trial on our website. Just head to newsforjax.com slash case.